Hey there, YouTube. Welcome on back to Artichoke Dip. My name's Rob, the solo tabletop gamer. And in this video, we're going to touch into a subject that I think many people struggle with, probably many people hate dealing with. And whether you're a DM or you're a solitaire gamer, it's the necessary evil of the game. Probably for, like I said, a lot of people, the one thing that they dread, the one thing that just always seems to rear its ugly head, whether it be before, during, or after the game session. What is that you say? Journaling. Yeah, journaling. Let's jump into this quagmire of a subject and let's see if we can dispel some of these myths and perhaps make it easier for you and get you less time writing, especially things that aren't pertinent. This sounds interesting to you? Right on, let's get into it. But first, a couple of things I need to get out of the way. If you like the content, let me know. Click that like button. And if you are new here and you just found my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe followed by the bell icon. Every time I upload a new video, you're gonna get a notification so you don't miss one. Journaling. <laughs> I say a quagmire because in fact, that's what it is. It's a quagmire. There have um, been so many questions surrounding this and they all boil down to, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? How would you do it? Is there a simple way to do this? Yeah, it's one of those things about solo RPG that, well, first of all, why is it important? Well, one of the reasons why it's important is you have to have a historical timeline. You have to have something to be able to reference back to, to be able to see from the inception when you came up with the idea of the current game setting. And it doesn't matter if you're playing pre-published campaign settings or modules or you made your own. It shows and reflects from session one all the way up to the current session you're on now, how the story has progressed NPCs that have come into the game, very vital aspects of events, persons, things, items, so on and so forth. Those tidbits of information that you need to know. Otherwise, you are just playing one shots constantly without a clear recollection or ongoing log of information to be able to reference back to, which is important. Trust me, it's very important. Now, this is one thing even Artichoke has struggled with over the years. I've tried many different options out there until I found myself, as I said, getting back to my basics, getting back to my roots. And that is classic notebook paper and a pencil, which I find to work best for me. I speak for me because I can't speak for everybody out there. You know what works best for you and you know what you like. The only thing I can give you is the knowledge of what I use and what I found works the best for me and has proven itself over the years, time and time again. So let's jump right into this thing and get into the quagmire, knees deep into the muck. Well, first and foremost, the thing you have to decide on, how are you going to keep track of your journaling because the most vital part 
of journaling? It's organization, keeping everything organized. Something simple that can be, at that point, brought up on a moment's notice. You can go through it and you can take away those key notes that you need to know. And there are various different applications, programs, and everything else out there that can be utilized. Whether it be something simple like purchasing cool looking little journals like this that you can get that are just notebook paper throughout and graph paper on the back side with hex graph, I'm sorry, with hexes towards the back, graph paper here to be able to record those floor plans of dungeons and to be able to record your tracking across the wilderness to be able to reflect through your notes. It's one way to do it. It's a cool concept and it's a cool idea. The other thing is maybe you want to go more expensive route and get stuff like this to it looks very flashy. You got very cool parchment paper in there to utilize to where you have to use ink to actually record all your documents. Me personally, I would not use this. This is where I just store all of my ideas, rare ideas that come to me. Things such as when I want to do a sketch, when I, when it comes to my imagination peaks and I want to design how I think a new cool game room would look, then I journalize them and itemize those into there. But it doesn't mean that limits you out there from using something like this. Heck, if it speaks to you and you find it cool and that's what you like, go for it. There's no wrong way when it comes to that. Or a program I can tell you about that I was introduced by a friend that had told me about it. It's called Obsidian. Obsidian is designed with uh, tabletop RPG gamers in mind. You can go through this, you can put your notes in, add infinite amount of files, and as you go through, it's going to document and keep all of your notes in order into separate files that can be brought up with a mouse click and reviewed. There is no right and wrong way how to organize it. It's all personal, I'm gonna say, taste and preference to the person playing the solo RPG or the DM and how they want to do it. But there's one reason why I stick to notebook paper, pencil or pen. That's because I had learned my lesson years ago. It was my second iPhone I had. I had a pretty cool app on there and it was called RPG Note Maker, I believe it was called. And I used that. At that time, I was just completely 100% engrossed with 3E, playing 3E about every single night. Hell, this is prior before I even came up with the idea of artichoke dip. And, well, working up the confidence to make the first video, I kept my notes in there and then as time went on and I got my next iPhone, something happened. Something had occurred when I went in there to re-download the app. It was at that point I found, well, the app was held hostage with a subscription. It was a harsh lesson to learn and I wasn't willing to pay a subscription to get to my own notes. So those all went to the wayside. And I learned right from that moment, moving on. And for many of you out there who may wonder why, I, I, I stay old school and to the way of paper, pencil, and doing it that way. Despite, I get it, it takes room on the shelf. You're purchasing paper. People may consider this wasteful, but from my perspective, it's all part of the tabletop gaming experience. All of it. Whether it's going to get new pencil lead, picking out a new pad of paper, rolling physical dice, 
putting minis out on the tabletop. All of it I love. And it's the reason why I do it the same way I do do it. But this is a little off the beaten path to what we're talking about with organizational. Organization, first thing is, I highly suggest if you're going to keep an ongoing journal, find which way is going to work best for you to organize. Me personally, I really highly recommend this right here. A loose leaf binder. Get yourself some notebook paper. It's relatively cheap. It comes with the holes pre-punched in it. And if you look at the amount of binder room that you can get there, you can do an extremely lengthy and amount of notes or game session that could span years and years and years for you to be able to fill up before you run out of room. Truth be known, vast majority of solo RPG gamers probably will never reach that. I doubt many even groups of gaming uh, groups playing would ever fill that up with that much information of just notes, just game session notes. Could be wrong, but just saying. The next thing we want to get into with this quagmire of journaling, how to journal. I mean, what are we exactly writing down? What do we need to know in what maybe is just not that pertinent? And at what point are we just writing a story and we're really getting off the beaten path of what we need to know? Well, think of your journaling like this. It's the best way I can describe it. Think of if you've seen a timeline. On this side would be from this December 7th, 1945, all the way up to September 11th of 2001. Now you automatically know in your mind what them dates are. You understand this is the beginning of World War II, and this is when the Trade Centers were taken down by planes. Everything in between that, you're probably drawing a blank. But if you were to look across that timeline by the dates with a quick entry telling you what happened, everything comes into full picture. And even though you may not know everything, it gives you a point of reference that you could go to to do a deeper dive into it to learn more about it. This is how you should think about your game journaling and how your game journaling, I have found for me personally, reflects and works just absolutely perfect for what I have to do. What do I mean by this? Well, when you lean towards writing a story, when you lean towards your game journals are just absolutely writing down every single thing from my sorcerer stepped up he at that point prepared his spell and got ready he went through the motions the spell went off the we'll say the magic missile at that point streaked across the battlefield hitting orc number three orc number three shrieked out in pain as he took this many hit points of damage and then and then and then and then you see what I mean? There's a lot of information in there that's not pertinent. That should be what should be on the game table in front of you. You should be in the moment, enjoying that, savoring that. It doesn't have to be reflected. An example I'm going to give you, let's say you, if you remember the old Baldur's Gate video game, one of my favorite from the PS2 era. As you're going through the board... And you just have these hordes of encounters coming at you. And you're just slaying them down one after another. Trying to survive to get to the next. To get to the next to open up the map more. You don't recall every single one. As a matter of fact, you're just looking at what's coming towards you. And you're just clicking the X button as fast as you can. Trying to take them out so you don't have to start all the way back at the beginning. But what you do remember 
what you do take away. When you meet an NPC, when you meet a merchant, or when you reach the end of that board and it goes to the cutscene, these are substantial events that have happened with that gaming session that should be chronicalized. And they already did the work for you that way. Not only is it reflected on your map, but also the effort put into it to make it stand out away from obviously the board and just the overall encounters that have been generated for you to be able to engage with and slain at that point. Your journals should be this way. I have found writing this way and utilizing my journal this way to keep it simple not only reduces room, it gets straight to the point. It's clean, concise. The next game session, I have all the cliff notes of what I need to know. And even moving forward with game sessions and going back, it's still relevant. It's what I needed to know. And I can actually see over time how one event leads to another, which leads to this, without clouding it with a whole lot of unnecessary information that just had to do with gameplay. It really had nothing to do with the facts that I needed to know for the game to move the game forward. And this is what I mean by chronicalizing in that way. If you can think of it as a timeline given from here to this point with all the significant points in between. And I'm going to dig into that a little bit deeper and explain how I do that. So if you recall from if you watch the playthrough with um, Mork Borg, where I had left off, and then I did the video series on building villages. And if you have seen those, great. You're going to have a point of reference of what I'm talking about. If you haven't, well, I'm going to do a quick recap here, as I'll show you in my journal, where even when you watch the videos, you're going to be able to see all of this in play and how I did it and just how condensed it is, but yet nothing has been lost in translation, so to speak. So let's pull that sheet of paper out that I had so I can show you the quick chronicalization, how I did this and what led up to that. Uh, here it is. So from my game session, and I had played through it, I recorded it, I had uploaded it here for people, people that are interested to watch game playthroughs, they were able to look at this. But let me re read to you my game entry into my um, journal. Now, mind you, there is a way that I do this that I'm going to explain to you here in a bit and you can understand why I do it the way I do do it. But let's jump into the entry. It says the PCs discovered a goblin encampment overrun as they make their way to the cave area. They are quickly overran. They are unable to reach the end boss at the cave. The sorcerer was badly wounded and the other two PC PCs escaped back out to the trail. I'm familiar with the area. They had taken a wrong turn that leads them into a trap. The rocky valley is blocked, was blocked by an avalanche of falling rocks, followed by the area quickly being filled with greased ball bearings that would uh, trip and roll. The unfortunate into, okay, so I let me back up there. The area fulfilled with grease ball bearings that would trip and roll the unfortunate into a pit of acid. They survived the trap barely, but Elena, the cleric, prays for a divine favor. The gods grant it, but a life must be replaced for the sorcerer's life. 
Elena sacrifices a goblin to the pit of acid, but the sacrifice will not please the gods, and the sacrifice is chosen, the corrupt village mayor is chosen as their choice of the sacrifice. They escape the rocky valley out into the forest by way of a path that leads to a cliff to the forest below. They encountered more goblins, and after a half day's travel, they encountered a great cat. There they had camped, but the camp was uneventful for the evening, and they had made their way back to the village. What I had summarized at the end of my notes was the village of Atan. Number one, locate the corrupt mayor. Number two, have treasure appraised. And number three, try to find a henchman or NPC as a village spy to help work with them. Boom. That's it. I had hit all of the needed to know points of that game session. I had taken an entire hour of gameplay and condensed it down to the needed to know facts of that game session. Now, as I move forward, I can always go back to that. I can look at it and I'm going to get the useful information I need to know. What I don't need to know is how many uh, saving throws did the characters fail? Uh, what did the goblin do when he, you know, slid down the ball bearings into the acid? What, these are all things I'm saying that are irrelevant to your journal and are going to clog things up. But if you want to keep a record of these, I would highly recommend you start another journal. More or less like a story to where you're going to write everything down into that. The reason why I say this is because as you're writing this down and your creative influence that you're going to get from this, well, you're free to do what you want with it in there without really having an effect on the gaming historical record that you need to know, the pertinent information you need. Keeping those two separated, I think you will find will not only help you in the long run for the fact that well, one, you're dealing with what you need to know for your next game session without altering everything. And the other one, you're free to do whatever you want to do with it and take it any direction you want to without any repercussions on your game sessions or altering anything that could possibly change the entire game unexpectedly in a direction that you don't want it to go. All right, this is the way that I record my game journal. I keep it clean, concise, straight to the point, and try to condense it as much as possible. When do I do my game journaling? I mean, when, when should your game journaling be done? Well, if you do your game journaling like this, as you see, you can read through that and what you could take away from that very quickly looking at that, the characters are heading to a village. They're heading to this village called Matan. That's where my next game session is going to pick up. And then the game session will move on from there. But where I do all my journaling is after I have played the game session, this is a very key takeaway an important fact to remember about journaling. Journaling should be the very last thing you should worry about. As a matter of fact, journaling should be the last thing you do before you walk away from the table. You should be focused on the game session. Enjoy the game. Enjoy and savor all them moments. Don't worry about your journaling. Put that out of your mind. Focus on the game. After your session has concluded, depending on where you want to leave the session off, whether it's on a cliffhanger, whether it's suspenseful, whether what have you, wherever that's going to lead you and take you, and the game session has come, you decided come to an end, that point, 
sit and reflect on the session. Then write down the key notes that are permanent. Uh, we need some coffee, artichoke. That are pertinent to the game session you just had. And those important things you're going to need to know for the next game session to come. I have done it this way over the last um, several years. It has never failed me and it's always worked out to my benefit and never against it. Prior to this, I did the story way where I'd be sitting and just writing this stuff out page after page after page. But you know what I found after time? What I found is not only did I find this more of a chore and I was sitting back going, wait a minute, I want to, I want to roll dice. I want to play the game here. I have this entire 30 page description that I'm going to put into my journal. And then after I have this 30 page description, I got to read back through this and I'm why, 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 why? Well, over many PlayStation sessions and many different, I'm gonna say tweaks I've added to it, experiments I've done to it, I have found the right formula for me. Now, my formula may not work the best for you, but I can say for me, I have done this time and time again, and it works the best. I wait till that game session is over. I sit back and think about it. What is really important? Getting back to the PS2 game I used as an example, are all the encounters you had, are those all really that important to document in there? I mean, sure, if you rolled a 20 and you got a crit and it's a very substantial attack, good for you, right on. That's the beauty of gaming. You're living in that moment. But if you look at the entire historical timeline of all your game sessions from when you began to you decided it ends, how many criticals are you going to have? How substantial are they? And is it really important? Or is what important for you to know are the persons, the places, the things are those important? Do you find a critical hit far more important and to elaborate in your game notes versus your characters have just stumbled upon this old abandoned temple surrounded in mystery? And as they draw close, it's at that point they have found maybe on a map that they had received that hidden within the map this is the place that it was marking to go to. What would you think is more important? Documenting the critical hit over this encounter that has happened two game sessions ago or this place that's ultimately going to alter the storyline and just keep adding and moving on forward to it. Now, when I go to elaborate even more on that, and as the example I used, you think of the historical timeline starting from 1945 to 2001 and everything in between with the significant dates. Using the example of this temple, I'm going to write that down into the game notes. That's very important to know in the journal. But then I'm going to put everything else that's extremely important for the gaming on a separate page. That way... I have more far in depth notes, knowledge, maps, so on and so forth that I need to know there. This serves two purposes. One, I don't have to go back through notes too far back. I have this resource separate and I can just pull it out and reference it to it when I need to. It helps better refresh my memory and without bogging everything down and I have found that this works 
absolutely 100% flawless for me every single time I do it. When it comes to maps, keep them simple. You don't need to go like overboard unless you want to go overboard. When I keep my maps, they are visual references for me to look at, to be able to have a pictograph in my mind. And at that point, it can really help me be able to judge better on the tabletop time and distance, how many game sessions, so on and so forth, that's gonna need to take place. I utilize these now. A lot of this, if you're playing theater of the mind, may not, well, be practical for you. You're playing theater of the mind, this is all taking place in your imagination, and then at that point, you're gonna have this extremely elaborate journal. Well, when it comes to this and the organizational, the only thing I can suggest is you may wanna break things up into chapters. That's no joke. I'm being serious, making it far, easier for you to be able to go back to that historical timeline and find what you're looking for, particularly if a reoccurring NPC, your person, a certain location becomes permanent again in your game, a place or an artifact or a particular rare item has come back up again later on into your game sessions, a thing, right? you can be easily accessed. Keeping it simple. The far more simple you keep it, the far better it's going to run and the less it's going to bog you down into the quagmire of journaling. Now, journaling, like I said, should be the last thing you do. It, it, unless you want to do an extremely, oh my God, in-depth story, by all means, to each their own, do it, move on with it. Um, but I can say for solitaire gamers, if you're just into this for the, you know, you enjoy the games, you want a game. And if you're like me, you have multiple different systems that you play, you cycle out and play with, well, you want your notes to be pretty accessible, pretty easy to get to. And as you sit down to go into that next game session, you wanna be able to read the last game entry that you had put in and be able to pick up on that next scenario without being bogged down by reading 20 to 30 pages of the entrance. You see what I'm saying? I have found that this has worked perfect throughout the years for me. It's worked just absolutely flawlessly for me. But like I said, using an example, think of it that way. Think of putting your game journaling together as a timeline. And along that timeline, there are other significant dates. And within those dates, if you need more information, Put those on a separate page put that detailed information in there and put that in the separate part of your journal so when those do, do have to be accessed they can be quickly accessed brought out everything you need to know is right there refreshing your memory for this game session now i use this exclusively particularly with npcs npcs can be one of those things that you can find can really screw your game journal over if you are not careful. What do I mean by that? Well, you encounter an NPC. I like to put down the name, what the person has to offer. Do I go through the entire, what I would say, theater of the mind conversation that happened? No, I take away the key points that are per permanent to the overarching storyline and the characters. Because realistically, in the historical grand scheme of things, that's all you need to know. Unless, like I said, you want to do it that way, then I would recommend, well, having a section with that NPC 
everything written down, put it into a different section of your journal to be able to go back to. Why do I say that? Nothing stinks more than you're playing your solo RPG. You're going along, you have this tallied up list of your NPCs, and this reoccurring NPC comes back up into the storyline. Now, all of a sudden, unbeknownst to you, because it's gotten lost in this huge record of notes, that, well, the NPC influence was completely different and counterdicts to, in this game session, the way that you have utilized them. And as you're sitting back looking at your notes, nothing makes sense. There's this huge gap, this huge hole in the storyline of your RPG, which at that point leaves you going, fuck. That's why I say the way I journal and the way I've kept mine, I find works very well. If I run into an NPC, that name is noted, a brief description of its influence, of its actions, of whatever it is to the characters at that particular time, I then will go further into the depth with that NPC. Sometimes I will include backstories if it's permanent to the storyline, if it's something I need to know or the particular influence that that NPC has that I need, need to know further into the future, then that's chronicalized. If it's just a random occurring NPC that may be in this particular settlement that really has no bearing and really is gonna have no influence or importance whatsoever on my future game sessions or the current game session that's just something that's played out in the game session and it has no relevance and basically is not included into the journal notes because it is irrelevant and it's not going to offer anything and it's just bogging down precious room for other important things that need to be chronicalized into the journal. And this is the way I do it. This is the way I have found that works just absolutely spectacular. Now, the other thing I'm going to touch on with your journal is don't underestimate maps. Never underestimate chronicalizing your journal and giving yourself good pictorial graphs to go off of to be able to give you a visual reminder. Like I said, of time, of space. These are all critical. They really, really are. If you think about it this way, if you've played six solo sessions, you left point A, you reached point B, and now you have reached point C. But looking back through your gaming notes you have no correlation or idea of the time that it has taken to get from point a to point b to point c there's a void there is a hole in there this should be reflected in your notes not only hey it took us this many days to reach this destination point but keeping a simplized ledger, even like this. I know some of you may be laughing looking at this and you may be saying, look at this ridiculous, whether you want to call it a hobo map or whatever else you want to call it, does not matter because it's not your gaming table, it's mine. But on the back, I can keep a detailed running ledger of what's there. I can go back into my notes and pull that up. I have everything I need to know along with NPCs and everything else, nothing gets lost in the span of time. This gives me more time to focus. When I sit down for that next gaming session, I am getting the permanent information I need to know to pick up on. Journal, at that point, goes to the side. It's not even a second freaking thought at that moment. The gaming comes first, the session goes through, it concludes itself. 
then at that point, the journal is updated. Now, sometimes the journaling can take a little bit longer than what I anticipate, especially if I have to make map areas, if I have to go more into depth about an NPC, such things like that. But this is the quagmire of journaling, is it not? But overall, it's there to help you out as a solo gamer. Or if you're a DM, it's able to help you out to have an ongoing running record. So when your players ask you, hey, do you remember, you know, it was like three, four game sessions ago, we were like here and I'm trying to remember what I got from this guy and I can't remember his name because, you know, we may be going back there. I want to hit this guy up and see if he has any more of these cool weapons left. Well, if you're the DM and you don't know, you are put in a pretty sticky situation, are you not? You're just going, oh, well, yeah, hmm. Now, I guess on the fly, you could create somebody else and put them in that position to be able to fill that void. But if you think about it from the player's perspective, if you're in a group, does this not feel disingenuous, cheap, and almost, well, like your play session that you had, the time that you have given up for the scheduling and that you had sat down to be with all of these people was insignificant, not important. And would that not make you feel as if the player at the group, that the DM favors maybe the other players in their input over yours? These are all foods for thought. This is why journaling is so important, not only for a DM, but also for the solo, solo player as well. It is more crucial to the solo player for the fact that we have a lot more on our plates to contend with than just a regular average tabletop RPG player to where they just have their character to maintain and worry about, they are going to get together with their gaming group and everything is put onto the DM. All that weight is on his shoulders to be able to create, engage, and keep the players motivated. With the solo, solo RPG player, that's all on us. We have a huge, huge, I'm gonna say, um, We have a huge job in order to enjoy these games. A lot goes into it and a lot can be taken away from it if done correctly. But when it comes to journaling, journaling is the quagmire. It is the necessary evil of solo RPG gaming, but it does not have to become a novel writing experience it does not have to become so overburdened to where it is almost feared. You have doubts in your mind. Am I doing this right? Am I doing it wrong? How do you do it? How would you recommend doing this? Blah, blah, blah. No, just remember, keep it clean, concise, simple. Think of a historical timeline. Your session one started here. You are currently somewhere here in the historical timeline, and depending on where you decide to end it, which could be here, you have all these important dates. These should be your entrances in for each game session. And from those, if you need more information about it, like I said, focus on the person, places, and things. These are gonna be the important story elements that you're gonna to wanna to have more information on. And if more elaboration is needed on those, put that work into it and make sure you store those into your journal to where they can be quickly accessed and referenced. So this way you are not being bogged down with unnecessary information that really, like I said, two, three play sessions later, you're gonna find is gonna have little to no 
significance whatsoever. And if you feel the need to where you want to just journalize everything, every little tidbit of information from every single solo RPG session, I would highly recommend starting two journals. One that has your historical timeline in it for you to reference for your solo RPG games. A second that is just you writing. That's all it is. Just writing the story out how you see fit and you're able to go back to it. And if you need more, I'm going to say information accuracy as you see fit to put into it. It's always there for you to read and go back to. Now, these are my thoughts, my friends, not yours. These are ways that I have found to do my journaling and keep it simple over the years to where it's clean, it's concise, straight to the point, does not bog me down. And you don't have to have this massive crash course. You don't have to have um, elaborate computer programs. You don't have to have all these things in order to keep it organized. You can do it very, very simple. And like I said, I have found personally over the years, the thing that works the best for this is the old school loose leaf binder with just your everyday notebook paper with the pre punched holes in it to put in there and this is for me this is what works well for me but the tablet of paper works great or an electronic program that you want to use for that the one thing i can say about the electronic program where you may find some hiccups along the way especially if you're making maps and you're making things like that, you may have to find another program in order to make your maps on, in order to transfer that over, in order to put it into your notes. This is why I choose notebook paper and pencil. I can have everything in here. I can do everything the way I wanna do it. And typically within less than an hour's time, I have all the pertinent information I need in there. I have the objectives laid out for the next game session. I have the maps. Everything I need is right here at my fingertips. I don't need a subscription. I don't have to worry about if something goes wrong with my computer, I can't access it. Now I'm in the dark. None of that. I just have everything in front of me as the way that I need it the way I want it the simple way the artichoke dip way and like I said my friends these are my thoughts and not yours but let me know in the comments below let me know if what do you think is my way decent is my way informal or is my way so completely alienated and different from yours that you go in a completely different direction. And at the end of the day, well, let me just say, no way is different, is better. If the way that you do it helps you recall all that pertinent information you need for your next game session and to keep moving without losing any of that information you need, you're doing it the right way. You don't need somebody to tell you how to do it. But the scope of this video was if you are journaling and you are getting lost, you're struggling with it and you just kind of need help in one way or another with it, this is the way that I have done it. It's the way that it's worked for me over the years, is still working for me and works the best. Tried and true every single time and has yet to fail me. All right, my friends, with that being said, and my coffee starting to get cold, I would have to say this is artichoke dip.
signing off. Oh, <laughs>